All right, so for the benefit of those just starting to watch this, here's the answer to, of course, when you say that in pointed things, that doesn't really come through in a video, right? So there's the answer to this one. You can look at it. If you've got questions, ask. And let's move on. Okay, so we want to do quadratics and radicals, which I noticed that on the timeline there's a bit of an error. It says something about rationals, and there's nothing rational about any of this. So, quadratic functions. Circle the equations that represent quadratic functions. Let us throw them out there. What do you need to have a quadratic? What must you see? You've got to see a squared. Okay, you see a squared here? No. What about this one then? So should I circle this? Yes. What about this one? You see a squared? I see a quadratic. This one? No. This one? Yeah. Let's go down. This one? Yeah. This one? No. This one? Yes. This one? No. Now, this one? got a squared, but it is not a quadratic function because the squared can't be on the bottom. This one? No. This one? Yes. Because if you expand that, you get x squared plus 2x minus 8, which is a quadratic. Okay? This is the factored form, right? Okay, for each graph of a quadratic function, state the properties listed. Right? This is review, right? Whereas we did this in, uh, in 20. So the properties we're interested in are the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the coordinates of the vertex, the equation of the axis of symmetry, the minimum or maximum value, the domain, and the range. Okay, so let's... This one here. So what are the x-intercepts? Zero, zero and four. We're going to write them like this. As a list of numbers. We are not going to put parentheses around that or brackets, because if we did, what would it become? A coordinate. It'd be a coordinate. It'd be an ordered pair, right? So we're listing the x-intercepts. X-intercepts are numbers. They are the x value that you get when the curve crosses the y-axis or when y is equal to zero. What's the y-intercept? Zero. zero. Again, y-intercept and x-intercept are numbers. They are not points. Okay? If you want to point, this point is zero, zero. This point is four, zero. But that's got nothing to do with intercepts, right? If we could say, what are the coordinates of the x-intercepts, then you could say zero, zero, and four, zero. But just asking for the x-intercepts, I just want the x value. Right, when y is 0. y-intercept, I want the uh, uh, y value when x is equal to 0. Coordinates of the vertex. What are the coordinates of the vertex? 2 and negative 4. Two and negative four. Okay. That one we do put in parentheses because it is an ordered pair, right? It's a point. It has coordinates. The equation of the axis of symmetry x equals 2. So the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the vertex. Okay. It has an equation which is x equals 2. So for that we can't just write down 2, right? It's an equation. So it's got to be in the form y equals or x equals, right? That makes it an equation. What is the minimum or, okay, first of all, which is, is it a minimum value or a maximum value? Minimum, and what is the minimum value? Okay. So it has a minimum value of negative 4. That means that the smallest y value is negative 4. That also tells you that it opens which way? It's got to open up because it has a minimum value. Right? It's got a smallest value. The domain. Okay, And we don't have much room to write stuff, so we're just going to write x belongs to the reals. And the range. And that goes together with basically the minimum value, right? If it's a minimum value, then all of the y values must be greater than or equal to it, and it is negative 4. Sorry, let me just scroll that back down so you can write in. So why don't you do the next one? Okay, uh, I'll just pause. Pause for a fact. Yeah, I know. Eh? That's, that, that's what's going to happen if, you know, so the guys that are doing football, but they're never going to watch it anyways. But if they did, then all of a sudden, boom, you know, all the answers are there, right? So, you know, that, at that point, 
when you, if you're at that point, if you're watching the video, you're going to hit pause, right? Because now you want to sit and, and look at this and just sort of check it or make, yeah, okay, everything, everything is good, right? I mean, this one we went through, we talked about everything. This one, if you're watching the video, is just going to pop up and you might want to hit pause. And there'll be no explanation of this, but you should be able to figure it out, right? Okay. Did I mess anything up? Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying like, oh, there's the axis of symmetry or any of that stuff. If, not if, when I make mistakes, let me know, okay? Some of them are actually on purpose. I usually pause at that point and kind of look at you and, and wait, but a lot of them aren't, so I just keep going until I need you to say, wait a sec, I think 2 plus 2 is 4, not 14 or whatever. Uh, determine the equation of the axis of symmetry for the quadratic function that has x-intercepts of 4 and 10. No, maybe, I don't know. Is it? Okay. How do you do that? Add them and divide by 2. So it says determine, which means we have to do what? Show work. Determine means you have to show some work. Okay. State means, just write down an answer. So if I said state the axisymmetry, then x equals 7 is a perfectly good, you know, that's a statement. Determine, eh, you've got to show some work. And some people might be going, like, how do you get 7? I don't remember that. So let's take a look at it. So one of the things you can do is just sort of sketch it out, right? Say, so, well, okay, here's a quadratic, which has x-intercepts of 4 and 10, right? The axis of symmetry goes through here. And you go, oh, well, wait a sec, that's going to be halfway between, right? Because it's symmetrical about this line. So however far it is to here, it's the same distance to here. Which means that this is the average distance, right? The average of 4 plus 10. So it's 4 plus 10 divided by 2, which is 7. And so there's the equation of the axis of symmetry, right? x equals 7. And you showed some work to go with it, so you've justified your answer. What if it has x-intercepts of negative 3 and positive 4? What are we going to do? No, diagram is not drawn to scale. So a lot of times when, when I draw diagrams or when you draw diagrams, they're just a placeholder for information. Right? It's going to be a place to put stuff down, then I can use that to work some stuff out. So what's the calculation I want to do? Well, actually, I guess we can just kind of stop there. Okay, one half, right? Or 0 0.5. Either one is acceptable. They're both exact values, right? You don't want to write one third and then write 0 0.3. One third is exact, 0 0.3 is a rounded value. You could write 0 0.3 and then repeating, but. Okay, passes through the points. How are we gonna do this one? Same idea. Yeah, same idea, right? It's just, what we need is, we need points which are equidistant from the middle, right? So if it's intercepts, well, we know, okay? Basically, they have the same y value. They're on the same horizontal line. As long as the points are on the same horizontal line, the axis of symmetry will be right in the middle of them. So these points here at negative 2, 5 and 6, 5 are on the same horizontal line, right? So they're on the same horizontal line. That makes this distance here equal to this distance here. That makes this line here halfway between negative 2 and 6. How do we get halfway between negative 2 and 6? We average them out. So x equals 2. How do you check that? You go, well, how far is it from 2 to 6? How far is it from 2 to negative 2? Also 4, right? Same distance. Okay. Questions on any of these? Right. Basically, it comes down to this, right? You have two points on a horizontal line. The axis of symmetry will be halfway between them, right? For each equation of a quadratic function, state the properties listed. So now we're going from 
here's a graph. You can look at a graph, and from the graph, you can say, oh, okay, my x-intercepts are these guys and y's, right? I'm reading information off a graph. This is, here's an equation. Can you get the same information out of an equation? What are the x-intercepts? Agree? Disagree? How'd you get those? Okay, why? Why, why would you switch them around? So the x-intercept occurs when y is equal to zero. So I need to make y zero. f of x, that's the same as y, right? How do I make this zero? Well, when you're multiplying, you say, hey, if this is zero, the whole thing's going to be zero. What value of x makes this zero? Negative four. If this expression is equal to zero, whole thing's going to be equal to? What value of x makes this zero? Two. That's where they come from, right? So you get it in, if you get it in factored form, you figure out what values of x make it zero. And in factored form, so I need x plus 4 to be 0, x is negative 4. Y-intercept, how do you get the y-intercept? Replace, replace x with 0. If I put x in as 0, what does this become? Okay, so we get 3 times 4. If I put x as 0, what does this become? What's 3 times 4 times negative 2? Negative 24. What's the y-intercept? Okay. So the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. I set x to 0. That first set of parentheses becomes 4. The second set becomes negative 2. You multiply 3 times 4 times negative 2, negative 24. What is the equation of the axis of symmetry? Okay. How do you get that? So you say, okay, look, hey, x-intercepts are on a horizontal line, right? These points are equidistant from the axis of symmetry, which must therefore be in the middle of them, so we're just going to average them. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Divided by 2 is negative 1. Axis of symmetry, x equals negative 1. It's an equation. Got to have that x equals. If you just write negative 1, it's like, yeah, okay, what is that? You give me just a number, I'm figuring it's a min value, a max value, an intercept, but it's not an axis of symmetry. What are the coordinates of the vertex? So the x-coordinate is negative 1 because we know the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. And now we're going to do a little bit of work, right? Because we're going to go back up here, we're going to put in x is negative 1, so let's do this here. y is equal to 3 times negative 1 plus 4. So, 3 times 3 times negative 3? Negative 27. Negative 27. Okay. A little bit more work to be done than just, hey, here's a graph, what are the characteristics, right? Because you read the characteristics off the graph pretty easily. Here, you have an equation, you don't have the graph, you have to do some calculations. Okay. Any questions on that one? I'll give you a moment to write it down. Here, let me give you a moment. Hey, f of x is x squared minus 8x plus 14. This is a standard form equation. What's the only thing that's really easy to tell from a standard form equation? Y intercept, which is? 14. How are we going to figure out the equation of the axis of symmetry? <laughs> but, like you got in, you got to make in the equation that we did before, kind of thing. So okay. Um, so we can do that, except we can't do that. Not in the twenty two sense. We can't do that, right? Because we don't do that in twenty two. So here's the. Some of you are coming with different backgrounds, right? So how you do this is up to you. As long as it's mathematical, then it's fine, right? So some of you know how to complete the square. Completed square form puts it into a vertex form. Vertex form is this form that's here, right? This is the one that's called vertex form. 
This we all know. Wherever we come from, we know this is vertex form. Very easy to find the coordinates of the vertex, et cetera, et cetera, right? In order to get the equation of the axis of symmetry, we don't need the vertex, but to get the vertex, we need the vertex. So, you know, if we find the vertex, we get the axis of symmetry for free. If we find the axis of symmetry, we do a little bit of work to get the vertex. So, I'm going to go with a 20 2 way. In a 20 2 way, we do this. Okay. It's called uh, partial factoring, right? Or, or something, I don't know. Call me on it if I said it wrong, but you don't remember it either. So. It's a partial factoring. It's partial factoring. Gosh. It's been a while since I taught 20 2. So. Um, what we do is we factor an x just out of the x squared in the 8x. Okay? And what that, so if you've, if you've done 20 1, you've never seen this before, and you'll go, why didn't they show us this? It's actually easier than completing the square, right? Completing the square is actually a pain. Okay, now, what we say is this. If x is 0, what's y going to be equal to? 14, right? So from this equation, if x is 0, y is 14, yep? If x is 8, what's y? No, if x is 8, that becomes 0, which makes this 0, and we end up with 14. Okay, what do we have? We have two points on a horizontal line. One at zero, one at eight. Where's the axis of symmetry? It's halfway between at four. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals four. We want the vertex. How do we find the vertex? X is four. We know that x is four. We put a four in here and we work it out. And that will give us the y value. Okay, do I have room? So we want f at 4, which is 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 14. 16 minus 32 plus 14, which is negative 2. 3, negative 2. Okay, comments, questions, concerns? Does that work? So some of you are just seeing this for the first time. You've never seen this partial factoring stuff, right? But it works. Yeah. So now, for those of you that did 20 1 and say, how do we complete the square on this? So let's complete the square. So completing the square looks like this x squared minus 8x plus 14. So in this one, we would take, get rid of anything in front of the x squared, of which there isn't anything, right? Okay? So. We would then say, what I need is, I need this, the x, I need the minus sign, I need half of the b term, which is 4. That's going to be squared. Okay? Actually, can I move that down? <laughs> Anyone? <Anyway. laughs> I can't move it all. As a okay. All right, all right, sorry. My, my apologies. Okay, so I would write x squared minus 8x, leave some space, go plus 14. I then come down to this line where I write x minus 4 squared. So it's, okay, because there's no number in front. I need half of the b term, which is 4. When I square the 4, I get a 16, so I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to add 16. Now, having added 16, these two guys are equal. Right? But if I add 16, I can't just add 16, it changes, so I need to also subtract 16. Now I've added and subtracted 16, so I haven't changed anything, right? This becomes minus 2. Your vertex is at PQ, which is 4, negative 2. Your axis of symmetry is P, which is x equals 1. Okay? So either way is acceptable, right? So those of you that did 20-2 are looking at this going, because well, you haven't seen this, right? We never did completing the square. That's a 20-1 thing. This is a 20-2 thing. Either way, we get the same answers, right? So I don't care how you do it. Okay. Next one. 
This is in vertex form, which is what this guy is, right? Completing the square puts it into vertex form. Vertex form is very nice for finding the vertex. So what's the vertex? Okay, vertex is PQ, vertex form is X minus P, so it's a number that follows a minus sign, so for this guy it's a 4, for this guy it's going to be minus negative 3, so it's a negative 3. Those of you know transformations, this is a transformation, 3 units to the left, moves the vertex to negative 3, and then 4. Which way does this thing open? Down. Down. What's the equation of the axis of symmetry? X equals negative 3, right? X equals the x-coordinate of the vertex, right? Regardless of which 20 class you did. X-intercepts. How do you find the x-intercepts? You set y to 0. So we're going to have to go here. 0 is equal to negative x plus 3 squared plus 4. We're going to kick the 4. Negative 4 is equal to negative x plus 3 squared. So x plus 3 squared is equal to positive 4, right, because we're just getting rid of the negative sign. Now what? Now you square root both sides, giving you x plus 3 equals, and at this point the next thing I write is the most critical part. What's the next thing I write? <laughs> Plus or minus. When you take the square root of the number 4, the square root of 4 is positive 2 or negative 2, right? Because we need to get two answers. We know that most of these guys have two intercepts. This one has to because the vertex is at negative 3, 4. It's above the axis, but it opens down. It must have two x-intercepts, right? Vertex is up here, and it opens down. It's going to cross the x-axis in two places. This will give me the two places. x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Don't put parentheses around there because it's not a point. It is intercepts. Why intercept? Set this to 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. Squared is 9. Minus 9 plus 4. Negative 5. Yep. Um, how did you get the Square root of 4. So I got a square root both sides. The square root of x plus 3 squared is x plus 3. The square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. Okay. Because I need two x intercepts, right? How many x intercepts could we have? Could have 2, could have 1, could have 0. Right? If it opens up and it's above the axis, you have no x intercepts. Right? I mean, actually, this and this tell you how many intercepts there are, right? I mean, the vertex is up here, and it opens down. Well, then it's going to have two distinct x-intercepts. If the vertex is on the x-axis, then it has one x-intercept, right? Because it's just on the x-axis. And if it opens down, but it's below the x-axis, then there are no x-intercepts. Okay? So you'll know that looking at the uh, equation. Ah, solve by graphing on your calculator. So calculator's out. I will pull out the Wabadinu. Okay, what do we do to solve the, first of all, what does it mean to solve it? What the heck is solving? Okay, what answer? The values of x that make y equal to 0, right? I need the values of x that make this true. Okay, so what do we do? We go to y equals, we punch in 2x squared plus 12x plus 13. Okay, hit graph. Okay, so there's two values of x. We're going to round to the nearest hundredth. You now have two choices, right? You do it the hard way, which is finding zeros. You can do it the easy way. Easy way is I'm going to go graph y2 is equal to 0. Okay. You're not going to see it because all I've done is just graph the x-axis. But what that allows me to do now is to go second calc, and instead of doing the zeros, which requires go to the left, go to the right, and guess, I can do an intersect between the two curves, which are the graph and this line. When I do intersects, here's what I do. I move to the point of intersection. 
or really close to it. That's about as close as I can get. It asked me for the first curve. You notice that it's on Y1, so I hit enter. It asked me for the second curve. Now it's on the line Y equals zero, so I hit enter. It asked me for a guess. Well, I moved there intentionally, because when I do intersects, I move there and I just hit enter three times, right? First curve, second curve, guess. And we get negative 4.58. And then we go back to the calculator. We go second calc, intersect. We arrow over. There's that. We arrow over. Get as close to the intersection as you can. You know, as long as you're close, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And again, if you don't remember to do this tonight, you come back, you can just skip to this part, right? We're about 25 minutes in, you just go to about 25 minutes in, you'll be able to see it all happen again, right? So that it's, it's there. So we go as close to there, first curve, second curve, and guess, and we're at negative 1.42, just doing some rounding. And there we go, we've rounded to the nearest hundredth. We have the solutions, which are the two x values. As a matter of fact, we might want to say x equals. And it's good enough to list it with a comma. Just don't put brackets around it. It's not an ordered pair. Are we talking about the sequence? Two ways to solve this. Easy way, hard way. What do you want to do? Hard way. Okay, you do it the hard way, I'm going to do it the easy way. What's the easy way? Okay, hard way is you graph 3x squared plus x plus 6 as y1. You graph 13x minus 2 as y2. And then you adjust the window so you can see where they're crossing. And then you find the intersection. That's the hard way. Easy way is you rearrange this equation by subtracting 13x from both sides, by adding 2 to both sides to make it like this one so it's equal to 0. We then graph this and look for the zeros or the x-intercepts. Easy way. Right? Because then I don't have this. Otherwise, you end up with this, and then you get a line through it. Right? There's a line, and you got to find points. And you sometimes they're off-grid, and then it's like, well, how do I find them? I can't see them. So all we do here is go back to here, rewrite this as 3x squared minus 12x. Get an actual minus sign. Plus 8. 8. Leave y2 equals 0 because we're looking for zeros, right? We made it equal to 0, so we're looking for zeros. So hit graph. Okay. There are my zeros, so I can see them very easily, right? Otherwise, you do it with the line, and you end up with, you know, this thing is actually shifted, and then the line is probably an answer is off the window, and you've got to go and mess around. Okay, second count. 5 is intersect. Move to the point of intersection right there. Enter three times. And we get 0 0.85. Bring it back. Second calc. 5 is intersect. Move around to the next point. Enter three times, right? Which is first curve. Second curve, y2 equals 0 on your guess. 3.15. And we're done. Now yeah, don't worry, we'll use the formula in a minute. It's like two questions down and we use the formula. Okay, questions on using the calculator, right? So we're just solving by various methods, right? One method is using the calculator. Here's a method, factoring. Solve by factoring, express solutions as exact values. Exact values means if it's a radical, you leave it as a radical, although you simplify it, right? So if you end up with root 50, it becomes 5 root 2. That's an exact value. If we ask for decimals, then you change it to a decimal and round it to whatever, right? But this is asking for exact values. This says solve by factoring. I might solve this. If I wasn't factoring, I would go x squared equals 121 and then square root both sides and get x equals plus or minus 11, which is the answer. If I am factoring, then I would factor this as a difference of squares, and then get the solution like so. Likely, we're just going to say algebraically determine, right?
Okay? It means two things. Do algebra, in other words, and determine, show the work. Okay? So solve this by showing the work. I don't really care if you factor it or if you just go x squared equals 121 and then solve. Okay? Just asking that it be done algebraically, not that you plug it into your calculator and get answers. Okay, let me just shift that over a tick. Solve by factoring two terms, not a difference of squares. Factor an x out. Okay. It's all you can do with two terms, right? It's either a difference of squares or there's common factoring. Actually, always check for common factoring first and then see if it's a difference of squares. So this is a common factor, which means that either this is zero or this is zero. What's the easy way to make this zero? Change that sign, stick it over that. And that's what you do out to break, right? Add nine to both sides, so just change the sign of this and divide both sides by five. So do it the easy way. Okay. Feel free to do stuff the hard way, right? I don't care, right? I just do stuff mathematically. If I'm doing stuff here, you know, kind of, well, what the heck are you doing? They come see me afterwards and we can just go through and I'll show you. Okay, yeah, hey, this is what I did. Okay, two numbers multiply to 70 and differ by 9. 10 and 7, no, let's go with 14 and 5. The 14 is going to be negative because the larger number is negative. The 5 is going to be positive. So you might have to play with your calculator, right, to figure out those two numbers. That, you know, so 70 divided by 2 is 35. Okay, 2 and 35, I can't get a 9 out of that, right? Doesn't divide by 3, doesn't divide by 4, does divide by 5. Calculate, you go 70 divided by 5, you get 14. You say, hey, I can make a 9 out of 14 and 5. This is how. And there's your answer. And lastly, 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. We know that one of the factors has to lead with a 3x, and the other factor has to lead with an x. So it's the only way you get 3x squared. We know that these two numbers here have to multiply to negative 4. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. If I stick a positive 4 here, I'll get a 12x. I want an 11x, so let's put a negative 1 there. 3x squared plus 12 minus 1 is plus 11 minus 4. You've got to practice a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes I don't see it either. You know how to figure out what the factors are if you can't figure out what the factors are? <laughs> graph it. Solve it graphically. Get those numbers. Turn the factors back into the numbers. So, for example, if we had the 14 and the 5, right? So if you graphed this, you'd have to expand your window a bit, right? And you would say x equals 14, right? And you would say x equals negative 5, but I need factors. So this is x minus 14 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. So it's x minus 14 and x plus 5. And now I factored it, although I didn't really factor it. I found the roots, but I turned them into the factors. This is all I'm going to write down, right, as if I knew what I was doing. But I did it another way. Yeah. I'm only going to see this. You're not going to show me that. Right? You do that off on a piece of scrap paper, it's going to see the recycle bin. Right? Same thing here, right? You find out that x is 1 third, then you multiply both sides by 3, you get 3x equals 1, and you subtract to get 3x minus 1. Okay. Solve using the quadratic formula, oh, express solution. Yeah, hey, the quadratic formula. Everybody knows? You got this all memorized? Yeah. yeah, if you sing it to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel, it actually, you know, X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I don't see. Why, you dramatists should be able to sing. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I can't. All right, so you need to identify A, B, and C. So A is 2, B is negative 5, C is 1. You should always write the formula down. I will 
give you the secret of math. I gave it to the tens earlier today. Secret to math is formula, substitution, answer. That doesn't always work because you're not always using formulas in that. But if you're using a formula, write down the formula, figure out the values that go in. In this case, I got my A, B, and C. I write down the formula. I'm going to substitute A, B, and C into it, and I'm going to work it out. Okay, negative B. Negative negative 5 is 5. This is negative 5 squared. This, B squared, is always what? Always a positive value, right? Because if it's negative 5, it's negative 5 times negative 5. The place that people make mistakes is they square negative 5 and get negative 25. Wrong, okay? B squared is always a positive value. So it's negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 2. Okay, extend the page. Extend the page. So this is 25 minus 8 over 4. Right? This is always positive. Because okay. you're squaring B. When you square a number, it's positive. That's it. That answer is in simplest form, right? We can't do anything with the root 17. 17 is prime, right? So it's only so you can't simplify that radical. We're done. Okay. These are your two answers. If you're solving something like this on a test and you have time at the end, go plug this in. Work out the x values, right? Find your x-intercepts. Write them down. Work out 5 plus root 17 divided by 4. Check and see if that's one of them. Work out 5 minus root 17. Hit enter. Divide that by 4. Right? They should match. That's a way to check things over, right? If you have time. Don't check this while you're in the middle of the test. You'll never finish the test, right? But if you finish the test, and these tests are generally relatively short, okay? So if you finish the test early and you've got something like this, then take a minute. Check it over, right? It's not like you're going to get to go anywhere else. Uh, can I leave now? No. So... You're stuck. Stay there. Okay, you do this one. I'm going to pause this thing because, you know. Done! Now let's leave that on the screen for half a second and then. No, sorry. All right. So, again, you know, if somebody's watching this, that's just going to pop up. And if that was happening, if you were watching at home, it's the first time you go through it, you're going to want to hit pause, spend a little bit of time and go through this. If you don't get it, Write it down. Like at some point, you might not get this to this, right? So just write it down. Bring it in. You can go to Henry's and just say, how did this happen? And somebody will tell you how it happened, right? Like, I don't understand this. Keep in mind, if I some of these I do at home on my own, and there's just mistakes in there. So I'll point it out to me, and then on YouTube, I'll throw in a little box, and I'll edit it out and say, oh, wait, this should be a whatever, because I'm not remaking the video. So now we get to do what we just did, right? Now we're simplifying radicals. So do you want like full, big, detailed explanations of all of these or just write the answer? I'll give you the details. So what we're looking for in simplifying radical is the largest perfect square that goes into 50. So you know what perfect squares are, right? So those are perfect squares. So we're looking for the largest one of them that goes into 50, which is 25. So we write this as a product, right? We write 50 as 25 times 2, keeping it under the radical sign. The laws of radicals allow us to then split it out as the product of two radicals. The reason we were looking for the largest square is we can then Take the square root of this, right? Which is five. five. So it becomes five root two. Okay? So you are looking to factor the expression under the radical sign so that it is the product of a perfect square and some other number. If you don't quite get there, 
in one step, then you're going to have to do it in two steps. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say that you write this down and you say, hey, 72, that's 9 times 8. What? 72 is 9 what? times 8, right? Because I know that 9 is a perfect square. So it's root 9, root 8, which is 3 root 8. At which point you've got to say, okay, am I done? Well, I'm done as long as there's no perfect square that goes into 8. But wait a sec, 4 goes into 8. So it's really 6 root 2. Because somebody else doing this might have said, it's the root of 36 times 2, which is root 36 root 2, which is 6 root 2. The answer is 6 root 2. You can go there in one step or two steps. Right? Yeah, you just get there. I don't care how you get there. Get there. As far as I'm concerned with these, you just write answers down. I'm not even looking for work. I'll never say determine this. Or I don't care how you do it. Okay? You look at cube root 24, you write down... What do you write down for me? You write down 2 cube root 3, I'm good. Okay, this is a cube root, which means that instead of having a perfect square, I want a perfect cube, right? Something that has a cube root. And that cube root, yeah, is 8 times 3, right? 8 has a cube root, which is 2. two. So this becomes the cube root. Don't leave off the cube root signs, right? Like the 3s. 3. So this is 2 cube root 3. If you want to check that over, how can you check that over and know if you're correct? Just plug it into your calculator. Go 2 times the cube root of 3, hit enter. Go cube root of 24, hit enter. If they're the same, you're done. As long as there's no further cube root there, right? And I mean, there isn't. You can't split 2 down and get anything further. Okay? So if you go 6 times square root 2 and you go root 72, they'll be the same. If you go 5 times square root 2 and you go root 50, they'll be the same. Right? 5 root 2, root 50, same. They're equal. Simplify each radical expression. No more. We've got to pace ourselves properly. How do you add these guys? They need to be like radicals, right? So we need to simplify them. Root 8, okay, this is where I stopped doing the detailed stuff and just go to the answer. Root 8 is 2 root 2. Because it's the root of 4 times 2 and the root of 4 is 2. What's root 18? 3 root 2. What's the root of 32? Stop confusing me. Okay. So in this one, I'm not giving you the individual details. I'm not going to write root 8 is root of 4 times 2, which is root 4 root 2, which is 2 root 2. I'm just saying it's 2 root 2. What's 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2 plus 5, 4 root 2? Yeah, we got 9 something. We got 9 root 2s, right? Question? So if you're not sure about these when I write them down, if you want to come see me later and just sit down and say, I, you know, like, how do you do that or whatever, then I'm happy to break it out for you, right? So you're comfortable with it. What's root 12? I'm going with 2 root 3. Okay, and then the whole thing will become 8 root 3. But I want to go with just 2 root 3 first. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go with 4 times 2 root 3. 
If you want to take that right eight root three, go ahead, do it. Okay, I'm fine with that. Root seventy five. Put an equal sign in front. How do you know you're right? You can work it out, right? You can go 4 times root 12 plus root 75 minus 2 root 48. And then you go 5 root 3 and you compare them. If they're the same, it's good. So if you're doing stuff like this on a test and you hand it in early, this stuff better be right because you can check it. You can check this. You can type this in. You can type this in. You can compare them. same answer, they should be right. Means I got a lot of work to do. I'm just changing days, right? That's why. So what I want to do is try and distribute those five days into where they're needed. So today I did it by just splitting this out instead of instead of doing this in one day, like the whole package. We're doing it in two. No huge rush. Oh wait. Okay. See you both. Yeah. Well, I did it. it it's the same, and I did it two ways. I don't always look ahead, so. And what do we got? 108? Our D is not. Yeah, our D is not. Uh, what's your D? Yeah, it's your D. It's your D. Oh, okay. So then do this one. I don't know. Somebody edited something. Yeah, everything was forward. Okay, whatever. Okay. Um, if I do that, I got to deal with 108, which I don't want to deal with. So I'm going to go. 2 root 6 minus 5 times 3 root 2, okay, because 18 is 9 times 2 is 3 root 2, right? So this gives me 2 root 6, oh, this is times, sorry, times 15 root 2, which is 30 root 12, but root 12 is 2 root 3, so it's 60 root 3. You get the same answer, even if you simplify that down. It's just... Okay, so there's multiple paths to the correct answer. It doesn't matter which one you take. Okay, so F or E, whatever it is on yours, you're going to use the distributive law. So you're going to multiply. If instead of writing 3 root 4, you just want to write 6, I'm okay with that. Right? I would probably actually just do that myself. Okay, Because when I, write, when I multiply root 2 times root 2, I generally don't like to say root 4, I just like to say 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. 3 times that is 6. So I would likely have just written the final line and not that intermediate line, but I'm showing you that because, you know, you can do that, it's fine. Okay, questions? Concerns? Anybody remember any of this stuff? Yeah? Yeah, sort of. He's lying. 
Yeah, it, it kind of, yeah, I remember doing stuff like that. I just don't remember how to. Um, if you, you know, kind of remember stuff like this, but, but want to brush up, you know, just go on YouTube and type in simplifying radicals or something. Um, I actually have a bunch from, I think, 20-1 or something, but, you know, you don't need mine. Go to Khan Academy. Um, Khan Academy is a good source of videos, right? So if you say, you know, I got problems with radicals, I need to review it, go to Khan Academy, watch a video on simplifying radicals. They're always short. So that one, they're unlike radicals, right? You got a root uh, two and you got a root five. You can't combine them, right? They just stay as they are, separate. Simplified, but separate. What do we do with these guys? How many products are we going to get? A lot. Four. Right, what do we got to do? We got to foil it out, right? First, outer, inner, last. <laughs> Don't move it around. Good, Good enough. Okay, so you have to multiply root 5 times root 5. Which is 5. Which is 5. So I'm just going to do that. 5 minus 4 root 15 plus 4 root 15 minus what? So look at that line, make sure you're okay with it, make sure that I'm actually okay with it, that I did it correctly. So you gotta try, mostly you're trying to figure out how the heck do you get 48? How the heck did I get 48? Yeah, 4 times 4 is 16. Root 3 times root 3 is? 3. 3 times 16 is? 48. Okay. So, you know, it's fine if you write an extra line, right? You might even write root 25. Okay. So some people might have written this. So it equals root 25 minus 4 root 15, plus 4 root 15, minus 16 root 9. Okay. Then from that, you get 5. These guys would just be gone. It's minus plus. So 5 minus 48, which is negative 43. Okay. I don't care what road you take to get there. Just get there and show some work along the way, if need be, right? Okay, what's this? What's this? What's this? What is this? So what I like to use, when I see root 3 times root 3, just say 3. So it's 2 times, but you can go 2 root 9, that's fine. So let me write up 2 root 9. Okay. Is that a 16? 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, 12 is 2 root 3. So this will be 8 root 3. 9 is 3, so this will just be 6. And pretty much done. Right? There are four different terms, right? I got a root 2, I got a root 3, I got a 6, and I've got a root 6. You can't combine them in any way. Right? There are no like radicals, so you're not allowed to add or subtract anything. 
So in this case, it is just four terms. Some of them are simplified. Almost done. Okay, simplify rationalizing denominators means that we need to get rid of a radical in the denominator. Okay, so to get rid of a radical, what you do is you multiply the denominator, where the radical is, by the same radical. But you can't just do that, because that would change the value. So you also multiply the numerator by the same number. What's root 3 divided by root 3? 1. So I'm really multiplying by 1. Will I change a value if I multiply it by 1? No, but I will change its form. So what I've done is I've rationalized the denominator, meaning the denominator is no longer a radical, right? Now it's a 3, and then that goes away, and now it's a 1. Okay, what do we do to the next one? Done? Is that it? Final answer? Did I miss something? Uh, what, does, what does your sheet have? That a oh, root 10 plus 2 root 5 squared. I know, I'm like, Like so? I don't even know why. I don't know why I have a different thing. It's weird. I thought I pulled them all out of the same place. So. Uh, okay, so squaring a radical, right? You square the first term, which is 10. You multiply these two terms together, which is 2 root 50, and then you double it, so it gives you 4 root 50. Square the last term, which will be 4 times 5, which is 20. Okay, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Can you, you just, like, say it one more time? Well, I didn't have much room, so I had to squeeze it in. When I square around, so if you square a plus b, you end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So you square the first term. You multiply the two terms together and then you double it. Because right? when you multiply outer and inner, you're really multiplying the exact same thing twice. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, so it's just two of those. And then you square the last three. I just didn't have much room, so I couldn't drag it out. Oh. Actually, there's an easier way to do this. You could have divided both of these by two. Multiple pathways, but they all lead to the same end. Done, right? Nothing to simplify there. So the, the 4 goes into the 12 three times, right? That's all. Right. Right. Just divide top and bottom by 4. If what? If you end up with root 3 over 3, it's right. 
If you left it as one over root, right? yeah, because it wouldn't be rational. So rationalized means that we have a rational number, and root three is irrational. So you can't leave a radical in the denominator. All right, a few more. We're done. I know some of you were done like 15 minutes ago, but just be quiet. Ish. Ish. Simplify each rack. I mean, you know, you can always go back and watch it, but you know, we're we're an hour in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a product of things which have square roots. So 45 is 9 times 5. 9 has a square root. x to the fourth has a square root. 5 doesn't. This has a square root, so I'm going to actually take its square root. So we get 6x squared root 5. Okay, so simplifying a radical is get rid of anything under a radical sign that is a power. If it's a cube root, get all the perfect cubes together so you can take them out and turn them into a number. <laughs> Square root, get the perfect squares together. Okay, get the perfect squares together. I've got 5x to the fifth. Okay, 4 is the largest perfect square that goes into that. x squared is the largest perfect square that goes into x cubed. To get the 12, I need a 3, and to get the x cubed, I need an x. Okay, this thing here is a perfect square. It's going to come out as 2x. This will be left under the radical sign. So 5x to the fifth, root 4x squared, root 3x. This has a square root, right? just 2x. So 10x to the sixth, root 3x. Only three more to go. Most classes aren't like this, just so you know. 30-1, most classes are like this, right? It's like, go. Luckily for you, it'll be in the winter, so you won't be sitting here while it's hot. There'll be snow outside and stuff. Have you ever been in the freezing? Freezing is good. Your brain works better at cooler temperatures. Yeah, more productive. <laughs> Okay, multiply it out. It's number times number, radical times radical. The thing that has a square root will be the 4, right? The largest number that goes in 8 has squared is 4. The x to the 4th has a square root. sides. Simplify, isolate the radical first, then square both. So you want to square this because it's binomial, will end up with four factors and one of them will still have a radical sign and then you'll have to isolate it again and square both sides again. You do not want to do that. So move this over, 
isolate the radical. Okay, now I get the eraser. Yeah, about right. Isolate the radical. Now square both sides. Done. Okay, so in the grand scheme of things, you have no math homework tonight, but you'll get some tomorrow. So, this was reviewed. Tomorrow we actually start the course. The lesson tomorrow will not be an hour long. Okay? I almost guarantee it. I don't know. Do we have the course the Where are we doing tomorrow?